So the most common symptoms occurred within the first week following vaccination, and even with the initial participants enrolled eight months ago, there have been no adverse events reported that started occurring more than that first week after vaccination. That's what we know so far about actual people getting the COVID-19 vaccine. And this makes sense. COVID-19 vaccines so far are looking similar in response to other vaccines that have been around for a long time. Most side effects from any vaccine occur in the first few days after vaccination and are related to local injection site symptoms or systemic reactogenicity effects in the first seven days. There are rare cases of reactions that can happen one to two months after vaccination, usually related to activation of your immune system. Anytime your immune system is activated, either by an infection or a vaccination, there can be problems in a small percent of the population. Even in rare cases of adverse events from other vaccines like Guillain-Barre syndrome or Bell's palsy, about half the time there were symptoms within two days of vaccination, and over 97% of the cases report symptoms within three weeks. The longest I could find was symptoms occurring at six weeks active vaccination. In addition to the really rare inflammatory or autoimmune reactions found up to six weeks after injection, I wanted to see if there had ever been responses to a vaccine more than two months after. In 1955, there were lots of cases of people developing polio after receiving the polio vaccine. There were many cases of paralysis and 10 children died. This became known as the Cutter incident because it was discovered that all the vials came from one laboratory, the Cutter Laboratories. And it was discovered that these laboratories had not properly inactivated the live polio virus. And so some of the vials of the vaccine actually contained the live polio virus resulting in long-term paralysis and even death. The vaccine was recalled and the Cutter incident led to improvements in regulations and oversight of vaccines. Even in these cases though, people detected that something was wrong within weeks of vaccination. And this wasn't a long-term effect of the polio vaccine, it was an error in manufacturing by one laboratory. It's important to note that the COVID-19 vaccines currently in use do not include inactivated live virus. So this error would not be a concern with the current COVID-19 vaccines. The other instance I could find was in 1998, the Lancet published a paper um, linking MMR vaccination with autism occurring in the future. Multiple follow-up studies could not find the same link. And in 2010, the original article was retracted when it was discovered that the data was altered by the author who was then paid to be an expert witness against vaccines. So the only example I really could find where a vaccine itself was found to have long-term effects was discovered to be falsified. So in addition to the COVID vaccine trial data that we do have, not including any long-term side effects so far, I could find no historical example of a vaccine being administered and then months or years later, a negative side effect occurring. This makes sense and leads to the third reason I'm not too concerned. There really isn't a good scientific reason to think that negative effects would show up months to years after vaccination. Scientifically, the way vaccines work is they introduce an antigen into your body and stimulate your immune system to learn to identify and fight that pathogen. The vaccine is then destroyed by your immune system and broken down just like any other molecule, so it doesn't stay in your body for months to cause a long-term effect. The vaccine trials will continue following participants for two years, so we'll keep watching the data to see if anything new comes up, but I really don't anticipate new long-term safety events. What will be interesting is to look at the efficacy long-term and see how long the vaccines provide protection.